Dr. Bansi, thank you, Dharmendra, thank you, all the colleagues who are present, and uh, thank you, chairpersons. Uh, after a heated debate and a grand opening by Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, I am here. Uh, and uh, I am sandwiched between the two great speakers. Actually, Dr. Manoj Chawla, Shalin Jaggi is coming and Dr. Sunil Gupta was already here. So what I will be talking about the newer modalities for the tighter glycemic control. We are yet to discuss about the role of lifestyle and diet, but I will straightway shift to insulin, probably because uh, someone else will be taking the uh, lifestyle and the diet session later on. So I will be talking about what do the latest guidelines say on GDM. I will not talk about the diagnosis, but on the management and role of insulin analogs, which is the topic assigned to me, the role of insulin analogs in pregnancy. We know the St. Vincent declaration that is to achieve a pregnancy outcome in the diabetic woman that approximates that of non-diabetic woman. I always remember Sunil Gupta's talks and from his talks we have learned that, that a diabetic mother's child should never know that the mother has hyperglycemia which means that you need to control the glucose of the mother to an extent that she is remaining normal glycemic throughout her pregnancy and that is how you control the diabetic woman with pregnancy so that the fetal hyperinsulinemia is minimized and the fetal outcomes can be the best. So that is the World Health Organization and the IDF uh, motto. Why the concern? We have already known that mother as well as the baby have long term as well as short term uh, complications because of the hyperglycemia. And what do the guidelines say on the GDM management? We uh, will not discuss different guidelines just to avoid the confusion, but we will focus mainly on the DPC as well as the RSSDI guidelines. And the RSSDI guidelines obviously ask for a strict glycemic control usage of insulin, do not delay insulin usage, maintenance of safe level of HbA1c that is 6.5 to 7 but as Dr. Sunil rightly said in pregnancy HbA1c has not a great value because HbA1c because of the RBC fast turnover may be, uh, there may be underestimation of the hyperglycemia and that is why you need to rely on the fasting as well as the postprandial glucose values and these days on the CGM values whenever feasible and available or accessible to the patient. Amongst the therapy, apart from the lifestyle and diet, insulin remains the mainstay. Of course, we are going to have discussion on uh, metformin by Dr. Shalini Jaggi, but at present in our country as well as globally, insulin remains the mainstay of diabetes management, especially GDM or even the pre-existing uh, uh, diabetes is concerned. And if adequate glucose levels are not achieved with multiple daily insulin infusions, insulin pump may also be required. We are having a talk on insulin pump by Dr. Manoj Chawla. So what is the recommended care as per RSSDI? Antipartum, very strict glycemic control, retinal checkup as well as renal assessment, especially albuminuria and creatine and GFR. Ultrasound as and when required by the gynecologist or obstetrician friend. Intrapartum care, we need to control the glucose intrapartum also for the best pregnancy outcomes to keep the optimal level between 70 to 110 during the labor and usage of fixed insulin analog with dextrose when required should be preferred to achieve the uh, glycemic targets. And postpartum also, we should not forget that though the hyperglycemia may win, but these women are at more risk of developing subsequent diabetes and that is why we need to take care of them. Sometimes these women may be having pre-existing diabetes or pre-gestational diabetes and they may continue to have insulin or the oral antidiabetic requirement after pregnancy also. So now when to initiate insulin? According to ACOG, if the fasting levels are persistently above 95, just a minute, let me have the pointer. Yes. So when the fasting values are more than 95 persistently or 1 hour more than 140 or 2 hours more than 120. If you look at the DIPSI guidelines and just remember DIPSI guidelines, more or less these guidelines are on the same page. 
but just to avoid confusion because we follow DIPSI guidelines in our country though there have been some debates, but still they are the most uh, uh, I would say uh, added to as well as implemented across the country and by most of the diabetes study groups in our country. So, if fasting is more than 90 persistently or post prandial is more than 120 after 2 weeks or 1 to 2 weeks of medical nutrition therapy, we need to initiate insulin. The glycemic targets in GDM again we will just talk about the DIPSI less than 95 fasting less than 120 either 1 hour or 1 and a half hour or 2 hour uh, post prandial. Again there is lot of debate about whether to keep it at 1 hour or 2 hour. So, may be one and a half hour may be ok. Which insulin to be chosen? Well, again all the guidelines are on the same page, but according to DIPSI it is ideal to use human insulin which is least immunogenic, but these days we prefer rapid acting analogs compared to the human regular insulin because it has got its own advantages and it is as safe as the human insulins. So, it is found to be safe and effective both as part as well as the fast acting as part now and Lispro are found to be safe and effective in achieving the targeted postprandial values during pregnancy. We also use basal insulin analogs, we will discuss about that maybe later, but till uh, I think 2022 we used to use NPH or Datamir because the other insulins were not approved for usage in pregnancy. If you look at the comparison between Datamir and NPH, the verdict is that Datamir is as safe as NPH insulin, but has certain advantages. The advantage here is that uh, in this study, uh, it is as efficacious as NPH in reducing the HbA1c, but the fasting glucose uh, is better with datamir insulin compared to the NPH insulin. So, if fasting hyperglycemia is a problem which is never is there in GDM because in GDM you heard from Dr. Sunil Gupta that fasting remains around 70, 80. It is the post prandial which is problematic, but in the pre gestational diabetes or diabetic woman who become pregnant you need to target fasting and there datamir has an edge over NPH insulin because it will give you better fasting values. Again talking about the rapid acting analogs, we have two analogs which are approved or which are used in pregnancy, one is Lispro and second is Aspart. Also the fast acting Aspart which is a newer version of Aspart uh, is also now uh, available for use in pregnancy. And most of the studies have shown that compared to human regular insulin which we popularly know as human ectrapid or human insulin R. Rapid acting analogs both as part and this pro and in this study it was the as part which was studied on the top of NPH uh, compared to human insulin regular plus NPH and the study showed that with as part you can see here that the post prandial control whether it is post breakfast, whether it is post lunch or whether it is post dinner everything is better with as part as compared to the human regular insulin and there are physiological reasons for that. Because as part has a faster onset of action, you need not wait for 30 to 45 minutes which is usually required with human regular insulin which, which happens rarely in practice. Everyone takes even human regular insulin just with meal or sometimes after meal. And that is why with human regular insulin it is very difficult to achieve a very good post prandial control compared to that if you are using a rapid acting analog like aspart or even fast acting aspart you will have much better post prandial control and at the same time reduction in the risk of hypoglycemia. So, you can see here that compared to human regular insulin aspart has at visit 2 as well as at visit 4 better post prandial compare, uh, control compared to the human insulin. And the hypoglycemia incidence is also numerically lower, statistically not very significant, but you can see numerical the difference is great 94 versus 86 episodes with the aspart insulin compared to the human insulin, regular insulin. So, hypoglycemia whether it is nocturnal, daytime or all over the uh, time that is 24 hour is less with uh, aspart insulin compared to the human insulin. Same story is true with the 
fast acting as part as well as the least pro insulin as far as the uh, glue lysine is concerned at present there are no recommendations for its usage in the pregnancy because there are no trials that have suggested that it can be safely used in type 1 diabetes also again as part has given better results compared to the human regular insulin again for the reasons which we already discussed and if you look at the perinatal outcomes they are not inferior almost similar with human regular versus insulin as part which means that you can use insulin as part as well as fast acting as part or least pro with equal efficacy better fasting control less hypoglycemia and equal pregnancy outcomes and that is why it becomes the preferred agent as far as the rapid acting insulins are concerned and there is no evidence to suggest that insulin as part crosses the placenta even human insulin sometimes can cross placenta but with as part the crossage of placenta is minimal and that is why as part has become very popular as far as the uh, usage in pregnancy is concerned and now we have a better version of as part that is faster acting as part uh, also known as FIASP and FIASP has also shown very good efficacy as far as the postprandial reduction is concerned with equal degree of safety. Now coming on to the long acting analog that is Degludeg and its approval in pregnancy there is a label change recently and according to the Indian guidelines now uh, that uh, were updated in January 2023, Degludec can also be considered during pregnancy if clinically needed. Of course, these recommendations are there or this label update is there for the other long-acting insulins also, Datamir as well as Glargin U100, but that is now there for Degludec also. So, it can be used in pregnancy if clinically indicated and the EMA, FDA all are on the same page. Uh, telling that you can use Treciba that is Degludeg in pregnancy and this was based on this expect study which showed non-inferiority as far as the control is concerned, hypoglycemia risk is minimized and the pregnancy outcomes are not inferior compared to insulin Datamir which is again an approved agent in pregnancy. So, you can very safely use insulin Degludeg if clinically indicated that that is what the uh, updated prescribing information says. So, you can use short acting analogs that is rapid acting analogs, you can use long acting analogs in pregnancy with safety now so as to give better control for your pre gestational as well as gestational diabetes patients. So, to summarize pregnancy with diabetes imposes several complications which can be prevented with better maternal uh, care especially taking care of the postprandial hyperglycemia. The guidelines recommend optimal glycemic control to prevent the risk of maternal and fetal complications and insulin remains the mainstay of the treatment in GDM for optimal glycemic targets apart from the diet and lifestyle which remains the prime treatment in uh, gestational diabetes. With this I will stop here. Thank you very much uh, the organizers and it is over to you. If there are questions, I think that we can discuss them at the end.